Today, we're gonna to be talking about some of the best fragrances and some of the worst fragrances that are very popular that have been released over the last five, six years or so. So some of these are among the best designer fragrances on the market right now, and some of these are complete trash. Hey friends, Ash here with Gen Sense. Hope you're doing really well. Like I said, we're gonna be talking today about some of the most popular releases from, we'll say 2015 until today in 2021. These fragrances are all popular, which means they all sell very well, which means your average person probably would say all of these are great, or at least the vast majority of them anyway. But not all fragrances that are popular, that sell really well, are created equally. So let's jump into it and talk about the best and the worst. Now I should say that this is not an absolute definitive list of the top five best and the top five worst, but these are definitely some of the fragrances that are at the top end and bottom end right now of popular fragrances. And also when rating these fragrances, I didn't do it completely based off of my own opinion. A lot of that played into it, obviously, but also I looked at how these fragrances are viewed on the whole. So by everybody else out there, basically, I took that into account. So we'll kick things off with this one, Azaro Wanted, as one of the worst popular fragrances right now. Now I'm gonna say right away that out of the fragrances in the worst list, this one is actually the one that I like the most, but a bunch of people out there don't really gravitate toward this one. And I can tell you why pretty quickly. It's because first off, the bottle, some people will find it tacky. I actually think it's kind of cool looking. And then also, it's a little bit similar to Invictus. And that's gonna be a recurring theme for some of these worst fragrances, a similarity to Paco Rabanne's Invictus. I've talked about it a lot and uh, I I'm kind of over it. <laughs> I'm kind of over the Invictus fragrances myself. So when a fragrance comes out and it smells like Invictus and it gets dunked on, I'm kind of just like, yeah, let that happen. Let that get dunked on. Maybe eventually these brands will come out with something new. This has lemon, apple, ginger, and tonka. And I'll tell you what Azaro Wanted is great at, and that's pulling positive attention, especially if you're a younger guy. It's got good performance. It's fairly versatile. It's definitely sweet, but it's a solid all around versatile scent for a bunch of people out there. And for the cost at discounters, which a lot of times is under $30 or right around $30, it's a steal. So yeah, gets a lot of hate and a bunch of people out there will tell you that this is one of the worst popular scents on the market right now. Uh, myself, do I hate it? No, but enough people out there do that it makes this list. All right, one of the best ones out there, Tom Ford Noir Extreme. It's got vanilla, kofi, amber, and cardamom. It's very sweet, it's rich, it's got just the right amount of spice in here. And as far as designer scents go, it smells very unique. Nothing out there really smells like this. Which is why it's a little bit surprising to see it rated so highly and on bestseller lists on all these different websites where people are buying it at full retail because it does its own thing. It's definitely, like I said, different. It stands out from the Paco Rabanne and Victai fragrances of the world. I guess that's the, the uh, plural of Invictus, Invictai. So this is definitely your typical Tom Ford in the sense that it's unique, it stands out, it will have you standing out, and the quality is above pretty much anything else that it's competing with. So this is one of the best for sure. All right, back to the bad ones. K Eau de Toilette from Dolce & Gabbana. And with this one, my own personal feelings did come into play a bit. It's got juniper, citrus, pimento, and vetiver. Now, I will tell you, I don't dislike it as much now as when I first smelled it. And I think that K Eau de Parfum is much better than this. You know, similar but improved. And with K Eau de Parfum being better than K Eau de Toilette and playing off the same ideas, it kind of makes this even more obsolete. It is a blue fragrance, it's very versatile, it's going to appeal to a lot of guys out there, younger guys, middle-aged guys, it's a potential compliment puller. There's a lot to like about it if you're just a, a casual enjoyer 
of fragrances, we'll say. But for me, with the things that this goes up against in the same category, the blue fragrance category, it falls short. And this one also has that bottle issue that Zara Wanted has, where some people are gonna take a look at it and just write it off as tacky because of the little crown cap. Over time, for me, the presentation has grown on me a little bit. The bottle is very simplistic, and then you have this sort of chintzy looking cap on top. But over time, after you've seen it over and over and over again, it's whatever. Okay, Eau de Toilette, one of the worst. So, okay, Eau de Toilette, one of the worst. Let's keep it moving on with one of the best ones. Dolce & Gabbana, the one, Eau de Parfum. Ginger, amber, tobacco, and grapefruit, some of the notes in the scent. And yeah, some people out there could say that this is played out because so many people own it, so many people wear it. But the reason that they do is because the fragrance is just that good. This is one of those times that they made a flanker of a fragrance, a very popular fragrance, and somehow completely crushed it, nailed it, and made it better in just about every way that you could imagine. Because oftentimes when you get a flanker of a fragrance, especially a very popular one, they they slip up here or there and maybe don't quite capture the magic that they had initially. But the one Eau de Parfum is such an improvement over the one Eau de Toilette that it pretty much made the EDT uh, irrelevant. This one is one of the best date night fragrances ever, one of the biggest compliment pullers ever. It's warm, it's sexy, it's sweet, it's inviting, it's alluring, it's a lot of different descriptors. So even though the One Eau de Parfum is no longer a cool pick because everybody knows about it, the reason everybody knows about it is because it's such an amazing release. Moving on to a bad release, Valentino Womo, Born in Roma. This one, I'm not a fan of. Now, apparently this sells very well, at least from what I can see online. It's always up toward the top of bestsellers and definitely the bestseller from Valentino. And that's kind of depressing because Valentino Womo and Valentino Womo Intense are just so much better. This is yet again a fragrance taking an idea from Paco Rabanne with Invictus and giving it a twist re-releasing it as its own thing and giving it a new name and then saying, hey, look at this super interesting fragrance. What do you mean it smells like Invictus? I've never even heard of that fragrance. It's got mineral notes, ginger and vetiver. And frankly, who cares? It's just a play off of Invictus. That's what it is. Just like their newest release, Valentino Womo, Born in Roma, Yellow Dream, which is a terrible name, is a play off of uh, Stronger With You. Valentino has lost their way as far as coming up with fragrances that speak about what their brand is and what they're trying to convey. Because the only thing that Valentino is conveying at this point is we have zero originality and we would like to rip off some of the best sellers on the market. Next up, a good fragrance, Spice Bomb Extreme from Victor and Rolf. Vanilla, tobacco, and spices, some of the notes in the fragrance. Apocalyptic performance in a good way. Normally, an apocalypse, not a very positive thing, but when it's an apocalypse of other people's olfactive sense because you have blown it out with your fragrance, actually, that doesn't sound positive either. But it is somehow because they'll smell you from very far away and for a long time too. Spice Bomb Extreme is the best spice bomb. If you're gonna own only one, this is the one to own right here. The vanilla softens things out a bit, but it still has that bomb of spice that it should have because it's shaped like a grenade and the name is Spice Bomb. They lost their way with some of the releases, but that one still awesome. It's good, you should get it. Let's go back to a bad release. Uh, <laughs> Spice Bomb Night Vision, Eau de Toilette, might as well. Apple, pepper, tonka, almond. I can't quite remember how this one smells. Let me go ahead and yeah, give it a little spray and oh yeah, Invictus. I mean, it, it gets old. Just Invictus, Invictus, Invictus. And I know that some people out there are probably like, nah, it's not, it's not it. You know, these fragrances, if, if they've never smelled them, you can't have all these fragrances smelling that similar to Invictus, right? Sure, in, in a way. I mean, they all have little differences. They have tweaks to make it their own. But if you spray Invictus on, and then you spray on 
Born in Roma, Azaro Wanted, Night Vision Eau de Toilette, you know, side by side, you're gonna be able to pick up a strong similarity running through all of them. You will definitely pick up differences, like I said, but that similarity, that familiarity, it's there. So why does this one get so much hate? Well, one of the reasons is, like I mentioned before, it's a spice bomb fragrance shaped like a grenade that really doesn't hit you with very much spice at all. It hits you with maybe a little bit of pepper in there, but not too much. And the fragrance is called Spice Bomb, not Spice Whimper. Instead, you get mainly sweetness here, along with uh, some nuances like almond that they try to put in there to change things up. For people that love the Spice Bomb line, that was a big letdown. Now, since then, they had Night Vision Eau de Parfum, which is better than the Eau de Toilette, though still doesn't really capture a lot of what made Spice Bomb so popular. And then Infrared is their most recent release. And that one does have a little more spice in there, a little bit of a cinnamon type feel, but I think it's still not as good as Extreme. So Night Vision Eau de Toilette. Nah, no thanks. Good fragrance time? Code Absolute. Yeah, I love that one. Vanilla, Tonka, Suede, and Green Mandarin, some of the notes in the fragrance. Good amount of sweetness in here. Not quite as in your face as Profumo, but definitely has a similar style. So those two go hand in hand to an extent. You've got Profumo that you could use if you really want to, you know, have your fragrance project and grab people's attention and, and come across a little bit more aggressively, a little bit sweeter. And Absolute still retains a lot of that sweetness, but it reins things in a little bit, smooths things out. It's a little more refined. For me personally, I find Code Absolute easier to wear and in more situations. I think it's a fantastic scent. Absolutely took me by surprise. Didn't expect to like it as much as I did. And I still love this stuff. All right. Last bad fragrance. Jimmy Choo, Urban Hero. Ugh. Now, one thing you'll notice here, if you haven't already, is that on the bad side, there are more fresh fragrances. Sweet and fresh. And on the good side, good side, you have more fragrances that are for cool weather situations. Warmer fragrances, deeper fragrances. And oftentimes what will happen is in the fragrance community, people that have smelled a whole bunch of fragrances, they will gravitate more toward these darker fragrances, these deeper fragrances, because they come across more interesting. But then your everyday Joe is going to like these fresh fragrances more because they're easier to wear. They're easier to wrap your head around. You smell it, you go, oh, it's fresh, sweet, versatile, bam, it's all I need. So I do want to say, that these fragrances in the worst category, they're not necessarily bad. They're made to do what they do, which is just smell as pleasing as possible to as many people as possible. And if you like these fragrances, there is absolutely nothing wrong with that, period. Now back to Urban Hero, I don't like it. <laughs> Pepper, finger lime, leather, and ambergris. It's a fresh, sweet, blue kind of fragrance. Uh, maybe a little too far on the synthetic sweet side for me. And I would personally go for something else. I would rather go with something like Azaro Chrome Aqua or Versace Dylan Blue, or Versace Pour Homme. Frankly, probably 50 other fresh fragrances I'd rather wear. At retail, Urban Hero is a hard, hard, hard pass. And the last good fragrance, Crotalome Intense. Iris Tonka Leather and Amber. This one has tons of versatility. Mixing the leather in with the Iris here helps make it come across a little bit more masculine than the original Prada Lome or Prada Lome Low. And for a lot of guys, that makes it more wearable. It's fantastic in fall, fantastic in winter. You can wear it in spring as well. Again, all that versatility I talked about before. Office safe and a surprisingly big compliment puller. And also, I really dig the presentation. This is a nice classy bottle. See, both of these bottles, very simple, but for me, I feel like Prada Lome, this bottle, much classier, even though this is made for kings. So there we go, Prada Lome Intense, the last of this list of five fragrances that are some of the best of the past five, six years, and five of the worst. And again, if you hate the fragrances on the best side, but you love the fragrances on the worst side, that is completely okay. This is just kind of a, a microcosm 
of how these fragrances are viewed by people in the fragrance community at large, we'll say. So there we go, guys. Let me know what is your favorite and what is your least favorite out of these 10 fragrances. As always, thanks for hanging out with me today. Thanks for your support. Stay safe out there. See you guys tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys.